Hi, I'm Dr. Tureen. This is my colleague, Jennifer Stanek, PA, and this is my wonderful colleague, Mackenzie. We are all work together at Trained Dermatology. What we are doing today is a further removal of this precancerous mole of my colleague, Jen's. So this is what it looked like before, this kind of dark, hazy bordered and irregular mole. Jen, how long have you had the mole? Probably 10 years. Had you noticed a change in it? In the last three years, it had gotten bigger and more irregularly shaped. Oh, interesting, okay. So we biopsy the mole and it came back as something called a junctional nevus with moderate dysplasia. So that means an early atypical mole. In some instances, this shows that this mole can move towards melanoma. In other instances, it just shows that it overall increases the risk of melanoma in Jen. Whatever we do, we are going to get all of this all clear for Jen because the pathologist did say that it was going a little wider. So what I'm doing, demonstrating today is a little further removal on this mole. So my wonderful colleague Mackenzie has already numbed this. What I am going to do is I'm going to just check Jen one more time. Any pain there, Jen? No. Any pain there? No. There? No. And there? No. So when the pathologist saw this mole, in this case, Dr. Dunlop had seen it going a little wider. So we're just going a little wider on the edges to encompass all those atypical cells so we don't leave anything behind to become melanoma in the future. So if you can see, it actually looks clear. So to the naked eye, there are no more atypical cells here. So patients always ask, oh, I don't see anything. You know, do I have to come back in for the further removal? This is all microscopic at this point. This can only be seen under the microscope. But even if there are any, you know, a few little atypical cells behind there, there, you know, in some instances there is the likelihood that we could develop melanoma there. So now I'm gonna go underneath it and take this spot off. Any pain, Jen? Mm-mm. You're doing wonderfully. Good. So you can see I went circumferentially all around the lesion, approximately three to four millimeters all around it. That should encompass those atypical cells and get them all clear. Now I'm putting a little bit of anti-inflammatory, some very dilute cortisone in. What that does, that helps prevent scarring because it's such a visible location and Jen is such a pretty girl so we don't want her to get a tight scar in that area that also could you know limit her neck movement and things so this helps prevent that and another little trick that we do is we put some little skin safe glue on the area that prevents the skin action from hitting the skin too much and causing irritation and pain so I'm just cauterizing now this is just heat to seal up the blood vessel and see how it does shrink it a little bit too. How are you doing, Jen? Great. Fantastic. Now Mackenzie has given me this little bit of skin safe glue. It's made for skin surfaces, so Jen will not have a reaction to it. I'm just giving you a turn a little bit to stretch the area. I'm applying it directly to the skin surface. You can see it forms just like a little, little bond over it, just a little shiny bond. We'll let that dry, and then we're gonna apply something called Steri strips. These are little butterfly strips that stay on for anywhere between three days to two weeks in some instances, and that will help protect the area as well. I'm just doing one more layer of the Skin Safe glue so it's perfect for Jen. So that is as simple and as easy as a precancerous atypical mole removal can be. It doesn't need to be a huge crazy removal, just enough to get rid of those atypical cells to prevent that risk for melanoma in the future. How are you feeling, Jen? Great. Good. It looks pretty good, too. <laughs>